Hello again. Today, the lesson will be on commonly confused words and types of sentences, the four types of sentences. So, to begin with, here are the fast, hard and fast rules for using commonly confused words. Now, this should be in your composition book, so you can refer to that as well. But I'm going to go through each one of these and there's, I mean, this is just a short list. There's others as well that people get confused with all the time, but this is, um, I guess, the more common ones. Okay, so to begin with, one word that people get confused with when they spell is accept and accept. It kind of sounds the same, so people spell either or and they don't know which one is which so accept a c c e p t is to receive and the the way you would use it in a sentence is i was so happy to accept her gift to receive her gift and the word that people get confused with is accept with the with the exclusion of so the example of that word in the sentence would be I don't like any candy except chocolate. The next example is affect to influence or change and it's a verb so my vote will affect the outcome and the word that people get confused with is effect. Effect is the result and it's a noun what was the effect of my decision? Next, beside. Beside is close to or next to. The example, is there a table beside the bed? And it's often conf confused for besides, except for or in addition. Who's coming besides you and me? Capital is a major city or primary and it's with an A-L. You notice the spelling is C-A-P-I-T-A-L. So Albany is the capital of New York City. It's a major city. And capital, O-L, a government building. It's a place. I sat on the steps of the capital. It's is the next example. I-T-S is the possessive form of it. The dog chased its tail. And IT apostrophe S is a contraction for it is or it has. The example for that word is it's so fun to watch. It's so funny to watch. So you could also say it as it is so funny to watch. Principal, P R I N C I P A L, is the administrator of a school. It's a person. Our school has a new principal. Principal, spelt with P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E, -E, is a moral conviction or a basic truth. It's an idea. So the theft is a matter of principle. Sense is the next one. Perception or understanding. The odor, the odor assaulted my sense of smell. And since. Indication of past time or because it's been stinky ever since gym class. Than, T-H-A-N, it's compared to. Chloe is faster than Haley. Then, at that time or next, I went to the store and then the bank. Okay, here's a common one that people often get confused with. There, there, and there. T-H-E-I-R is a possessive form of they. The couple wanted their yard mowed. There, T-H-E-R-E, refers to that place, in that place. The yard man was there at noon. And there, T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E, is a contraction form of they are. They're thrilled 
with the job he did. So you could have also said they are thrilled with the job he did. And that's for that last one, that's how you can be sure you've got the right kind of there. Whose, this is also another confusing one, W-H-O-S-E, possessive for, possessive for, of who? And the definition is, or the example, whose jacket is on the chair? So it's the possessive for who? Whose jacket is on the chair? Whose, W-H-O apostrophe S, is the contraction for who is? Who's going to find out? Or who is going to find out? And last, your, possessive for you, Y-O-U-R. Get your shoes off the table. Your, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, contraction for you are. The example, you're going to have to clean it now. And again, you can check when there's a contraction, does it make sense? If you take away the apostrophe, you are going to have to clean it now. So this one is a really common one that I see a lot of people mis, uh, misuse. Your, what you're going to do next is you're going to practice. It says, look at the words at the end of each sentence. You are to choose which word should correctly be inserted to the blank spot to make the sentence correct. Click on the purple box and type out the corrected sentence. The first one has been done for you. For example, number one, the accident did not blank Sarah's decision to blank the scholarship. So your options are affect and effect and accept and accept. So here's the correct answer. The accident did not affect Sarah's decision to accept the scholarship. Okay, so you're going to do that for the rest of the examples there. And then we're going to talk about types of sentences next. So there are four different types of sentences that we either speak, say, or write. And they are exclamatory, interrogative, declarative, and imperative. So the first one, <clears throat> what you're going to do here, it says, read the definitions and examples on the right side of the page in the table, match the correct definition and example, and then click on the yellow boxes and type in the answers. So I'll start you off. It says, type the correct answers in the yellow boxes. Here are your choices. So this type of sentence makes a command or request, usually ends with a period. Okay, so we know that this must either be a declarative or an imperative because it ends with a period. The, an example of this type of sentence is that, is, here's an example. Write your name on your paper. And you see it's a command or request. It's not a question. It's not asking you to write your name on your paper. It's a command or request write your name on your paper. So this type of sentence is an imperative question. Okay, the next type of sentence is in the second box. It asks a question. It ends with a question mark. Here's an example. Do I have homework tonight? And obviously, it must be an interrogative question, um, type of sentence because there's only one here that has a question mark. So you're going to copy this into this yellow box here. Okay, the next type of sentence is, a, it says, it makes a statement, it ends with a period, and the example for it is, he is my best friend. It's not asking you to do anything, it's just making a statement. And so this type of sentence is called a declarative sentence. So please type 
this example in the box for declarative. And the last type of sentence expresses great emotion or excitement. It ends with an exclamation point. For example, I missed the bus. And there's only one type of sentence here that has an exclamation mark, so it's an exclamatory sentence. And so you would type type these statements here into the exclamatory box. Okay? Now, the next page, what you're going to do, it says type in the correct ending punctuation at the end of each sentence in the purple boxes here. After you have done all of these sentences, decide which sentences are which and type them into the table below the paragraph to sort them out. The first one has been done for you. So here's an example. The first one. Are you coming to my back to school party? And, you know, it's a question. So it's an interrogative sentence. So it ends with a question mark. And we wrote that sentence down below here. Are you coming to my back to school party? Okay, so you would do the same thing for the rest of the paragraph. It's going to be a blast. And so you figure out what type of sentence, what should be at the end of this sentence here. Would it be an exclamatory, imperative, interrogative, or declarative? Okay, so either put a period, exclamation mark, or a question mark, and then match it up with, sort it into the correct column down below. Okay, that's it, and your teachers will go over the, the correct answers with you tomorrow. Thank you very much.